quarterback Daniel Kalen, Bellevue West, a member of the Elite 11 uh, 2024 Husker quarterback recruit for Matt Real, uh, Rule joining us here on Husker Online Headlines. Daniel, I know it's been a very, very busy summer for you. Um, it's got to feel good now to kind of be committed, have the Elite 11 behind you, and and start beginning to get ready for hopefully uh, a chance at a state championship for Bellevue West. Yeah, for sure. I think, um, you know, when it when it turned over from June to July, it really kind of officially put a lot of the recruiting stuff to bed, at least for now. And, um, you know, all gears are shifted towards, you know, my football team. And um, like you said, getting ready for um, hopefully having the most successful possible, um, you know, season that we came with my team. So that's kind of where everything, um, all my focus is shifted right now. Your focus has shifted. I did want to ask you about June a little bit, particularly your, we always, you know, for a long time, Daniel, we've heard about peer recruiting and mm -hmm. particularly when a quarterback signs and how, how integral it is. Is that something that's just unspoken between you and the coaches or do they, or do they kind of verbalize to you? No, this is part of the job, Daniel. Um, we need your help. I mean, like some of it's verbalized and I think, um, you know, I had to kind of take some initiative with that because I, I, go, I would kind of ask them for names of guys, um, kind of every position that they were going after. Um, and then vice versa, they would kind of give me some people to kind of hit up. But I think it, I think it kind of comes with the territory. Um, and it really probably varies from quarterback to quarterback, but I, I kind of tried to take some pride in it. Um, and, and I didn't think of it too much as recruiting, but more just kind of building relationships, relationships with those guys. Yeah. Um, especially the in-state guys like Carter Nelson's a guy I've already known for a little bit. Um, and we went to college world series. Some people were kind of like, uh, making it look like I was just trying to recruit him, but we've kind of been boys for a little bit now. And, um, that was really more us going to his friends. And obviously I was trying to tell him to come to Nebraska at that time. But, um, I think it's something that kind of just comes with it. Daniel, when you were committed to Missouri, um, you know, this new staff came in in Nebraska, I mean, what's jumped out about them? I mean, because you you got to study and learn a lot, a lot of different coaching staffs in the recruiting process. Mm -hmm. What did what kind of jumped out about Matt Rule, Marcus Satterfield, and the new Nebraska staff that really, you know, led you to say, you know what, I, I'm going to switch this commitment and, and join these guys? Yeah, I think from the first time that I met them, um, you know, I think that was late December when they first kind of got there and had a like an in-state recruiting event. Um, I think it was just really apparent that you could see if they're really genuine people. Um, I think that's something that stands out, you know, right off the bat. Um, and then on top of that, I think uh, they're really competitive people as well. So I think those two things really mesh um, very well. Um, and then, and then it's a staff that has experience, uh, especially coach rule and, and a lot of those guys that have been with him at, at other programs that he's flipped. Um, so I just think all those things combined, you know, just really kind of not only push me, but a lot of other recruits to, you know, kind of jump in on, on Nebraska. Daniel, we don't, you know, Marcus Satterfield, who's the offensive coordinator and will be your quarterback's coach, he's not really a self-promoter. He doesn't talk mm -hmm. about himself much. He's, I mean, he's he's a veteran coach, and we don't even talk about him that much. What mm -hmm. is it about his style of coaching that you like, about his approach? I mean, yeah, yeah. Um... I just think he's like his demeanor is kind of laid back. Um, he's a really kind of funny dude. Um, but at the same time, like I said, he's really competitive. And um, as a coach, he has great knowledge of the game. Um, just when I've sat in on film with him or kind of talked football, um, you, it's apparent that he's been doing it for a while and um, has a system that works, you know, back at South Carolina last year, they had a lot of success. Um, so I just think overall, you know, just how competitive he is as a person and just his demeanor and how he goes about things. Um, I think that's what stands out about him. And uh, like I said, he's, he's a really – has had success, and I think he's going to do a lot of great things at Nebraska, and I can't wait to play for him. Daniel, 23 recruits are in this class right now. I mean, when you start to look at what are the other priorities, I mean, what do you think are the other priorities that Nebraska kind of wants um, to finish out this class? I mean, because it is a fairly full number right now as it is at 23. I mean, wh wh where do they have you zoning in and as the leader of this recruiting class? Yeah, I mean, um, like you said, we have a lot of a lot of great recruits right now. Um, I think where we're kind of, if you would say, full is more at the skill positions. We have a lot of DBs and receivers committed. Uh, you know, two tight ends and Ian Flynn, Carter Nelson. We just got Kawan Lacey, who's a running back. So um, the biggest focus right now, I think, is more in the lines. Um, you know, there's a few D linemen and O linemen. Um, you know, one of those being Grant Bricks, who a lot of you probably already know. 
Um, I think a big commitment the other day was Carlin Jones, who's a really good kid who I've been talking to for a while. Um, he's a D lineman, but I would say that's probably one of the bigger focuses is, um, you know, getting one of those last one or two O linemen committed, um, going after maybe a few more edge rushers or, or D tackles and stuff like that. But um, like I said, overall, we have a really good class built right now. And, um, you know, I think we're going to be able to do a lot of special things. Daniel, you sound like a coach. It's fairly impressive, um, <laughs> but you're still a player. You still got a senior year. Last year, you put up big numbers, 3,186 yards passing, 36 touchdowns, only seven picks. Now, mm -hmm. five of those picks were in the first three games, and I've talked to Coach Huffman about this. He said he got into you a little bit. Um, what was going on those first three games? What changed? What, how, how did you – start to limit your interceptions and if i remember correctly i'm not trying to call you i think it was the first four games um okay. i think it was out because i think it was after a week because i think it started in week five where i had the run where i was kind of like um you know kind of done throwing picks but yeah coach huffman um uh got on me pretty good after some of those games and and it wasn't necessarily that i was playing bad uh -huh. but it was just some of those kind of lapses and kind of just lapses or miss miscues on certain plays that really just didn't need to happen almost like really just losing focus on some plays so I just think um you know he really got on me and really challenged me uh not only in the games but to, but to start in practice of just being smart um you know making sure I'm, I'm making the correct reads um not only quick reads but making correct reads and I think um after he got on me um it kind of just helped you know burn a little more fire under me and kind of motivate me to be smarter where I'm putting the ball um and I think it really obviously showed uh towards the end of the year um i think i went on like a four or five game streak with no interceptions to the very last game um but but yeah I, I think that definitely helped for sure huffman knows how to you know push the right buttons for sure daniel i'm looking at your schedule that you guys play and it's incredible <clears throat> how tough it is at the beginning you open mm -hmm. with creighton prep then you have omaha north burke then you have west side and carney i mean theater theoretically you're playing like four of the top eight teams mm -hmm. right out of the gun I mean, how much are we? I mean, how much are you guys expecting just to have a target on your team, knowing that you have three Husker players and you're, you're, everyone's going to want to take a shot at you guys? And in that first five weeks of the season, you see some of the best teams right away. Yeah, I mean, obviously, where where hype comes from, I think we'll have a lot of hype um, as far as like you said, having the three not only just commits, but you know, skill players that will be touching the ball, you know, constantly during the game. So I think that'll give us more hype. Um, but yeah, I mean, you gotta you gotta want to play in the big games for sure. Um, you know, prep will be a great game to start the year. Uh, Omaha North returning a lot of people. I think they only really lose uh, Tayshawn Porter, um, and I'm sure a few other people. But they'll have a lot, they'll have a really strong D line. Um, that'll be a really good game. Then Burke, and then we all know what what the West Side game means. Um, you know, not a, they have just as much you know talent as far as Power Five talent on on their side as well. So that that's going to be a really fun game, super highly competitive. Um, you know, Carney's a team that. Uh, you know, we dropped a game last year, too, that we definitely want to, you know, make sure we, uh, I guess, get, get our revenge in a way. But you, like I said, you got to love those big games, and we're really excited with the schedule that we have, for sure. How much comfort does it give you throwing, knowing you're, you have Davon Hall and Isaiah McMorris, other receivers, but those guys are – those guys have Nebraska scholarship. I mean, they're mm -hmm. commitments. It, I guess what I wanted to ask you is this. For people that haven't seen them play – what differentiates the two, if you were to describe them? Um, what I really like uh, about having both of those guys is that they they truly are different types of players. Um, you know, they obviously both play wide receiver, but Davon is more of a uh, you know straight line speed, big physical receiver, strong mm -hmm. hands. Um, and then on the other side, Isaiah um, a little bit undersized compared to, at least compared to Davon. Mm -hmm. um, but more of an open field player, runs really good routes, uh, you know, shifty side to side movements. So um, it kind of just gives our offense, you know, really every aspect um, of the passing game that we want. Um, and what differentiates them from, you know, other players, I just think overall, I think they both have really good speed. You know, they're track guys, both running 10 fives, maybe 10 sixes for sure. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, they just have this, have that type of speed and explosiveness. And then at the same time, they're, you know, not small. And, uh, you know, they're big, strong, physical. And um, and then the last part, I think, is just their competitiveness. You know, when they see a guy lined up across from them, uh, you know, they want to beat that dude and they want to, you know, you know, play to the best of their abilities, you know, every single game. So I think that's kind of what separates them. Daniel, as we wrap it up here, um, 
are, are, are all three how many of the three of you guys will enroll early at nebraska between the three bellevue west guys i know for sure me and davon will um and i'm pretty sure isaiah won't i think he had the option to maybe if he did a few more classes but i think he wants to stay and play basketball and run track one more time i think so yeah isaiah's uh, got a chance at four rings in basketball which yeah and that's what he was talking about i think he was saying no one's ever done it which yeah i i, I mean i'm trying to think lincoln northeast i don't know if they won four in a row but um, to, to be on four class a, cause he's at Miller North for two and possibly mm -hmm. LB West. Yep. Um, so I'm sure he wants to get that basketball ring. Yeah. And I think that's a big reason why, um, he, he kind of chose to stay as well, but yeah. Well, Daniel, we appreciate Man, you, Daniel. Thanks. Uh, taking some time and, and, uh, hopefully you can enjoy your summer a little bit here before you guys start practice. Yep. For sure. I appreciate you guys. All right. All Have right. a good one, Daniel. Thanks yep. again to you guys too. 2024 quarterback recruit Daniel Kalen Sipple for joining us on Husker oh, Online Headlines. I mean, he's like a coach when you talk to that kid, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, I was he's very mature. He he just ripped through those needs on the on the on the current class. And he corrected you. You gotta like that. Yeah, he did. He called he called me out. He said, I don't mean to call you out. Good job, Jordan. <laughs> I got that straight from Huffman. Straight from Huffman. Hey, the air raid, at least my buddy Matt called you. You backed up your air raid claim. Yeah, yeah. He's an air raid guy. It's an air raid offense. I mean, that's what they run. <laughs> but, but anyway, yeah. I, Daniel, obviously, okay. I mean, the thing that's really impressive to me is how he's is how how he's handled his recruiting elements. Obviously, gone pretty well. I mean, I'm not saying that he deserves credit for Davon Hall, Isaiah McMorris, Carter Nelson, you know, Jacory Barney, everybody. But, but, you know, I mean, his input helps, right? He's given them a lead salesman. Yeah. You look at you. You need the coaches are one thing, right? But you need peers. kids to peers, kids to talk to kids. Mm -hmm. Like it's hard for an, a grown man, like in my shoes to like really truly relate right at all levels. You need somebody that, that is their same age that, yeah. that, that can get them. And he, you, I mean, you can, I mean, one of the benefits of having Daniel on this, this podcast is for people to see what he's like and you can tell I mean, you can see why he'd be, be good at peer recruiting. I mean, he's very communic communicates very well. I mean, for, that's first of all, he's very relatable and you know, he's good. He's a good player. Those kids know it. Those receivers, Carter Nelson, talk about that, Sean, with us. He said, yeah, I may, Carter Nelson said, I may not have the, the speed of a receiver right now, but if they want to play me at receiver, Daniel Kalen can put the ball where it needs to be when I'm matched up against a six foot, 195 pound corner. 6'5", 220-pound Carter Nelson. The quarterback has to put it in the right spot. He's co he's confident that Daniel Kalen can do that. So, you, you know, Mario Verdusco. Remember Mario? Oh, yeah. What do you always say? Leadership is performance. Performance is leadership. Daniel could have great communication skills and be very relatable to the players, but if he doesn't deliver on the field, not a leader. He, 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 but he delivers. Put up those numbers at Bellevue West, goes to, uh, to the – to the um, elite eleven and wins the accuracy competition. That get that gets people's attention. Yeah, that accuracy competition. I mean, that, that should get your attention because it's not always about having the strongest arm. No, Peyton Manning didn't have the strongest arm. Uh, absolutely. I mean, it, he played in the NFL at the end of his career with not near he's the arms. ducks. Sean, he was throwing ducks, and that's what but, he was doing. But he still got it out. Yeah, he got it out, and he got the ball to people. But you're right. Now Daniel does have a pretty strong arm. I mean, he can make all, Sean. He can make all the throws, Sean. He can make them all locally. A lot of people will compare like the careers now of Zane Flores mm -hmm. and Daniel Kalen. I mean, two yeah. great power five quarterbacks. Yeah, they will. One's going to Oki state. One's going to Nebraska. Mm -hmm. um, and that will be interesting because I think a year ago at this time, you would, Oh, Zane Flores. But now Daniel Kalen, in terms of the elite 11, he made the elite 11. Uh, Zane Flores made the finals, but didn't make the final 11. Um, it'll be really fascinating to kind of compare. And Zane Flores has that state title a runner up finish. Yeah. Um, Daniel Kalen, you know, in this great Bellevue West team, I mean, there's a lot of pressure to, to deliver this championship game that we all want to see now. There's some pressure. West on side versus Bellevue West, depending on how the brackets draw, but mm -hmm. I think everybody wants to see that game on NET. Or, there's some pressure on him. The other thing about him is, uh, I mean, you put him on camera, his willingness to do these interviews. He's willing. He doesn't turn them down. 
we've we've done interviews with him. Now I'm not saying he does every single one that's asked of him, but there's a willingness he has because he feels Sean, he feels a responsibility. I mean, he's now he's in a pretty exalted position. You know, he's headed to the big school and you've covered this program for a long time and you know a lot is asked of quarterbacks here. I mean, it was incredible to me. I always remember Eric Crouch, how patient he was during when when he won the Heisman. Like it was, Sean, do you know how many interviews he was doing? It was incredible. I mean, I probably did 25 with him myself. It was ridiculous. I always would apologize to him. Eric, I'm sorry. We got to do it. We got, I got to ask you. Think how much NIL he could have made that year. Oh, God. Like just. Oh God! Yeah. Locally, oh he could, yeah, broke the bank. I mean, it, it, he would have made a million plus bucks. Yeah, he would have easily, easily. Uh, just the demand that he had, mm-hmm. <laughs> he got slapped on the wrist for eating a free ham sandwich yeah, or something. So, Remember yeah, that? Early, yeah, early did it. Yeah, so yeah, but Daniel's willingness to do like just to come on with us and then handle himself that well. That's all part of it, Sean. He's a pro. All, yeah, he's a, yeah. Well, and, <laughs> yeah, he's a pro, and he wanted to be a Husker. He did. You can't underestimate, like, yeah. the want to. Oh, 100, Sean. 100. Ding! <laughs> Got right. one. That's right, though. That, that Hondo. I mean, he, since junior high, he wanted to be a Husker. That, you know, that is big. That is big. Not because, you know, this is not that way for everybody. And he's, he's walking into a great position. You, you think about where the quarterback room is. Mm-hmm. Jeff Sims may or may not be back in 2024. Mm-hmm. Depends on how it goes yeah. for him this year. Yeah. Chubba Purdy, Heinrich Carver. I mean, it's, it's a favorable situation. Pretty favorable, isn't it? Because they didn't take a quarterback mm-hmm. in the 2023 class for high school. Right. And their 2022 quarterback, Richard Torres, transferred. Yeah. It's about as good as he could expect at a place like Nebraska. And that's, you know, maybe that's part of the reason he, he did it. But that, it is a good situation. Now, it can change fast. Portal can change things fast, right? Um, bring in a high-caliber recruit next year. I mean, it, that position, as we know, changes. R- r- hey, Sean, it changes really quickly nowadays with the portal. 